Thanks, Len. Um, yeah, just starting this job now on uh, a boat called uh, Magic Roundabout. One of my favourites when I was a nipper. The, the programme, I mean. So, yeah, we're going for uh, 340 watt Victron panels through a 150 35 amp uh, MPPT smart solar controller. So, like always, well, like often, I'm going to bond these to the roof with the brackets. Some of them should be here, and there's some middle brackets as well. So, yeah, bond these through with uh, CT1 which is a structural adhesive. So yeah, follow me along as I do this. Um, the customer has just recently painted this half of the roof uh, to get ready for the solar panels because the paint was a little bit flaky. So um, this paint's all good now. Uh, yeah, maybe on on solar panels. Oh, sorry if the camera's a bit jerky. Um, you can go down that route of, oh, how much solar do I need? How much do I use? What, what, what's that? How much that take? Um, I'm a bit more, I guess, practical than that, really. Uh, because often with, with a boat, with a boat that's really built, with all the roof furniture, mushrooms, centre lines, ladder racks, whatever, um, there's only so much you can get on anyway. So you could calculate whatever you want, but uh, can you get that much solar on there? I find, and my rule of thumb really, is 500 watt for an hour, narrow boat, yeah, a call interrupted me then. Um, 500 watt for an hour boat and a, a thousand watts, kilowatt for um, a wide beam. Um, that seems to work pretty well for me, even though there's a wide beam over there that's got uh, nearly two kilowatts on I've put on. But yeah, about that, that's for, of course, if you're living aboard, you, you, you want the answer to that is you want as much as possible. But I find, as a rule of thumb, what I can fit on, if I can get 500 watts on a narrow boat, a kilowatt on a, a wide, wide beam, the customers are very, very happy with that. So anyway, that's just my, um, that's just my view on that. You could do a complete in inventory of all the power you might or may not use and stuff. And even then it's a bit of a thump finger in the air kind of thing. So this works for me anyway, and seems my customers seem to be more than happy with that. Uh, this is like I say, uh, three one forties, so a bit under, a bit under uh, five hundred watt. But again, we're restricted by um, how much space we have. This one's a, a bit well, not odd one. Instead of all the mushrooms being in the middle, there's there's a couple that are like sort of offset, which really hinders what you can put on there. And of course, what I always say. Well, customer's always right. If you're on a huge, great panel, like a sail, yeah, okay, fine. Um, but you do really want to walk up and down your roof, especially when you're in locks and stuff, if you're doing locks single-handed. So if you look at this one, these are, if I remember correctly, 668 wide, 668 millimetres wide. So it gives you plenty of room to walk up and down the roof uh, for whatever reason. You know, you put a, a big, a couple of big panels there, they're right up to the edge. There'll be some point you've been a lock somewhere and you ain't going to be able to get to where you want to get to. So that's the sort of strategy, or not strategy, conversations I have with the customer. Okay, so, but uh, that seems to work for me. Right, let's get this done, eh? Okay, I've just laid those on the roof, roughly in the middle. Uh, put the brackets there. They're not uh, they're not fixed or anything. Uh, just, just to eye them up, really. So what I should do now is drill all the side brackets pop screws through all the panels to hold those in place and then I can move the panel really around as one then and uh, line it up in the centre, measure everything and what I do is I put masking tape around the feet if that makes sense and that allows me to jack the panels up, put adhesive underneath and drop them back down roughly where I want them so I've got a guide of where I want them but two things, that, that, that um, masking tape also uh, stops the bleeding of the adhesive. So where it squashes down and oozes out, a bit like a cake, uh, I can wipe my finger around there, remove the masking tape, and uh, it's a nice clean joint then. So you see that in the minute when uh, I come to bond them down. But uh, yeah, that's that. I'm just, you know, first, first bits is line them up, have a look, how am I gonna get the cables down the boat? Where's the, where's, where are the batteries? How am I gonna get the cable? 
cables into the boat where am i going to put the mppt controller that kind of stuff so it's all a bit of a discovery because as we know all boats are different but uh, i'm gonna go and get me drill and uh, drill oh excuse me um go get me drill and drill all these brackets and screw these down then they they're basically one panel then sort of all glued together all fixed together and i'll glue them down later okay for fixing the panels um brackets to the panels let's grab one okay you see these solar brackets then they don't come pre-drilled so i drill a hole in there and normally i put a decent clearance in there so what's that about seven or eight mil a little bit of wiggle room and what i use then to screw into the panels is these easy drive uh, screws so they drill and then tap as they go in the only thing to watch out for on these is uh set the clutch on the drill because it'll because it's aluminium you're screwing into it'll strip the thread pretty easily so set the clutch pretty light uh, and zip them in so i zip them in pretty loose at the end of the day we're not trying to bolt the panels tight we're just trying to fix them to the uh to the, to the brackets uh, and and it's the bonding really that's holding everything down i'll just nip them up but initially i shall leave them quite loose so i've got some wriggle room and then these can adapt a little bit to the slope of the roof maybe that's an important thing as well this is quite a curved roof um it's okay it's fine but um if you tighten them up they'll just go zip <laughs> um uh, so we want we want to make sure that we drill them in in place so i'll put, put the panels in in the center as, as you've already seen the panels are in the center pretty much i haven't measured them but they're about the center uh, and that'll that'll be perfect so when i put these on i can drill through into the panel and the angle is right so i'll show you that in a second but uh, i'll drill some of these first I'm drilling plastic and there's obviously plastic swarf I actually drill into a box so it catches catches that don't want plastic all in the waterways all right I'll crack on with all of these then I'll, uh, we'll fix them in Right, you get the idea they're just loose it gives the gives the, the, the panel somewhere to move when i bond down rather than being rather than being tight there's a bit of wriggle room there all right to get all the others nailed in and i have a look at the cables and stuff in the back okay i'm inside um god <laughs> really awkward um this has got um like a door on it obviously into a recessed cupboard you can see the inverters in there great big open space uh but i, I just can't get in there and no 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 comments about um whatever but anyway um it's a really difficult one uh you can't see it but the back of that that cupboard there is a great big steel almost looks like a tank i can't quite figure out what it is um Oh, unless it's the diesel. T no, it can't be. It can't be. That's going to be on the back. Uh, yeah, it's a weird design. So I'm really struggling to get into the engine bay at all. Uh, so, yeah, that's causing me a bit of a headache. But, of course, when, when people build cupboards and they put them, they put things in longer than arm's length and, and narrow, you, you can never get two hands on anything. 
So it becomes hell of a hell of a pain. So anyway, this door opens up, like I say. It's um, sort of an okay place to put that. So I've got to put an isolator in for the solar coming in. Uh, just an isolator, two pole isolator. What that does is allows you to disconnect the solar array uh, if you want to work on the controller and stuff because that's the thing with solar that most people don't think about. Um, this this particular controller is uh, is uh, rated up to 150 volts. Um, I, I, I can't remember what these three panels will be, but let's. It's going to be a going to be a good 80 volts um, DC. That's easy. You'll feel that, and you know 150 volt. Well, even that would, could kill you. 150 volts definitely could kill you. So people think solar power is some kind of magic fairy dust stuff. It's serious things. So small little panel on 12 volt. Yeah, who cares? Even that 12 volt in the right place. Um, but when you get up to like um, 100 volt DC and stuff, now, now you're talking. So um, you've got to be thinking about that a little bit as if it's almost live 240. DC is a bit nastier than uh, AC, but both both will do the job if they're given the opportunity. So anyway, uh, isolator on there so I can uh, switch that off. I'll tell you, the, uh, where have I done with it? Oh, it's up there. So these are the ones I use. Uh, I actually get these from Screwfix. So what they are is a... If I can open it. There we go. So they're, they're a two-pole isolator um, that um, is rated 100 amps, more than enough, for most solar arrays, not all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that allows me to disconnect and uh, and work on the solar array if need be. Or the, it's not the solar array, the solar controller. So you can see the panels as well as they just, they're just sitting there, they're not bonded down yet. Quite neat once you look at, uh, look at it from the back. You see them up there. So yeah, busy trying to fit uh, that, that, that uh, charge controller in and the cables to the batteries. Very tight. Well, it's a big open cupboard. I can see it's a big open cupboard. Look how deep it is. If if I had to change if I had to change that inverter through there, I'll tell you something. If any of you guys have picked an inverter up, you know how heavy that is. And to try and okay, you might be able to unscrew it, drop to the floor. How are you going to put another one in? Beyond me. So it's uh, yeah, they don't think about it. Nice boat, but so. I'm pondering with the idea of connecting the the positive up to the 12 volt distribution. I would definitely not normally do that. And there is, if actually, if I can show you inside. There is a negative bar there as well. Negative bus bar. Cable's easily big enough. It's a, uh, looks like a 25 mil up to that board. And it's also, let me have a look. Where you can see in there, it's also a 25 mil uh, coming up to the negative bus bar, which is more than ample to carry a maximum of 35 amps. So um, I think what I'm going to do, and like I say, I wouldn't do this normally. I'd normally go direct to the batteries. I always say, go direct to the batteries. I'm just struggling to really get there. So... I'm gonna have another look, see if I can see if I can find a way in. But what it looks like is, and I see this all the time, is they've bolted stuff in, they've wired like the inverter and everything in, and then boxed everything around it. So like, yeah, I can see it, but um, I can't fish a cable through. I, c I can't do anything. So it's a really tough one. Um, I think primarily with narrowboats, if it's safe, I'm sort of okay with that. Um, trying, trying, um, trying to install it the best way. That's the first way. Can I do that? Yes, what I'm trying to do. Um, I don't think. Yeah, there's one other boat where I had to wire to like fuse boxes that are outside of the engine bay. I just could not get to the batteries, and nobody wants a hole drilled. Um, 
where they can, you know, where they can, where seeds, top of the step, that top step. I'm going to have a look and see if I can get in underneath. But I'm always wary again, you know, there's a, if you drill a hole too low in that bulkhead, although there is, <laughs> technically, there is one in this one. If you see down there, I don't think you see down there. Oh, that, that goes through the, I don't think you can see that. It goes through that uh, cladding, that ploy, but it goes, if you can imagine, it goes up and out the top of a box, all welded in, no chance of getting in there. So I don't like drilling, a, I certainly don't like drilling a hole low between the accommodation space and the engine bay for, for lots and lots of reasons. Um, so I think I might have to do that, but I'm gonna have a little route around, see if I can find a different way. Um, I'll get back to you on that one. Well, I, I can't get through. I can't get through. So that's staying, that's staying there, obviously. And I'm going to join the solar input up to the incomer, the incoming 12 volts up there, which is a 25 mil. So the question is, and I know the answer, do I put a fuse here by the solar controller? Or do I put a fuse up here near the um, uh, distribution box where I'll go onto the 25 mil cable. I have to think about that. And why, why am I even asking that? Surely a fuse is a fuse. So do I put the fuse here by the invert, the uh, solar controller, or do I put it up there where it joins the 25 mil cable? And I'll put the answer below. But have a think about that and maybe think why. Yeah, just a thought. Um, some people might be saying, well, just drill a hole straight through the bulkhead there. Just go straight through. I don't know what's behind there. Um, I could see some water pipes, obviously, and there is water pipes. There's cables. They could be anywhere. Um, and because, because there's steel behind there, don't forget about using one of those cable finders because they're only working like plasterboard and things like that. So... I always say, and I've got to drill through the roof there, but I've took a light out so I can see the roof above, so I know there's nothing there. If, you, if you're if you just going to be drilling holes through boats, through woodwork and straight out through steel, if you don't know what's there, eventually that's going to catch you out. And I don't want to be there, so um, sometimes there's a compromise to be made. But of course, if it's safe, then I'm okay with that. Right. I need to go and get some cable. See how awkward it is even, even here. So I'm trying to make it as, as easy as I can. <clears throat> so the cable I'm using, the solar cable I'm using is six mil, proper solar cable. Um, and strangely enough, uh, what's going on here? That's the thing is, you know, you, you, you often wiring up things just by feel, you can't really, I can't get, face in there to see there. Yeah, I was saying, uh, solar cable is six mil, double insulated solar cable. Uh, and oddly this, on this particular job, uh, the cable going up to, for the charging circuit, it will also be six mil. Uh, why six mil? Okay, it's only a short one. Uh, 35 amp controller, so that's the maximum that could ever produce. Uh, six mil cable, single, 42 amps. So that's okay over a short one, so I'm not worried about volt drop because it's less than, it's only a foot or two. Um, and then I'm going up through a 40 amp fuse. So the thing with the 40 amp fuse, um, I'm gonna do something I'm fusing uh, pretty soon. 
Uh, the fuse is to protect the cable, not to protect the controller or anything else, just to protect the cable. So a 40 amp fuse, it, the, the fuse needs to be below the, the, the current carrying capacity of the cable. Yep, that's what I work on. So um, that, that can carry 42 amps happily. Of course, it could carry a lot more. Uh, so a 40 amp fuse will carry the load current happily and also protect the cable, which is what it's supposed to do. And like I said, uh, uh, while I've been talking to you, I'll put that in the wrong slot. <laughs> I've actually put in the positive uh, PV slot instead, which is no good, is it? Sort of hand on them properly. Hey, hey, ho. So here's our isolator. Well, there's those wired up now. So PV positive negative, battery positive negative. Uh, PV will go through the isolator, yet to be installed yet. I've got one of those cables. Now I've got to get uh, the positive, the negative up to there, where that bus bar is, and the positive up to that fuse box. So if you're wondering, that's um, a MIDI fuse, okay, um, MIDI fuse and base, uh, I'm, like I said I am going to go through fuses some point in the future. So this one just needs to go to the negative there. So I don't need much of a run there. I'll cut that one off then and I'll, I'll mark up the other one as a positive so I know which one's which. I can't, I, sometimes I'll, I'll just run these cables and I'll just test the polarity. But uh, in this case, I'm just gonna put a positive on there. So just that word warning again, uh, three panels in series, potentially, let's say 100 volts, because it, it, it won't be quite that, but it can be. Let's say 100 volts there. Uh, give that a lot of respect. If you don't know what you're doing, don't touch them. Yeah, and this goes through all my videos, really, just while I feed this cable through. Um, instructional. I'm not really showing how to do things, I guess. I'm trying to build some kind of awareness, really. Yeah, if you're a handy kind of guy and you know some about electrics, even though some's dangerous, um, 
then maybe you can get some kind of idea of how to do a job from like what I'm doing. But I, this is me chronic chronicling. <laughs> okay, I do come out with some words sometimes. When was the last time I used the word chronicling? Anyway, um, this is me just documenting sort of what I do on a daily basis as a, as a now boat electrician, as a boat electrician. Um, and, and a fairly pragmatic view of it as well. Uh, perfection is great. Uh, better, better is okay too. So, um, but yeah, on that uh, on that um, fund, really, if you if you don't know what you're doing, if you just just don't just don't touch it. Get a professional in. Um, I'm, I'm hoping this might, you know, for the guys that are quite handy, then maybe this is a good thing. But for you guys that are, have got a handful of thumbs, get, get a professional to do it. Uh, I will, I am going to cover some stuff on electrical safety. Um, and I had a battery explode on me a week or two ago. I wasn't even working on it. Um, and I'm still a bit deaf in my right ear, ear but I'll, I'll show you a picture of that um, there. Uh, that just went no warning no nothing so there's a lot of power in batteries and getting it wrong will um, could give you electric shocks it could give you really quite nasty burns uh, it could give you acid burns it could I've known people get uh, from exploded batteries shrapnel in their eyes acid on their skin um, it's it's give, give batteries give 12 volt a lot of respect a lot of people don't it's just bad Charlie 12 volt what could go wrong lots of things um, and I'll show, I'll, you've seen that battery there that just went pop and it was like a bomb going off literally I can only think it wasn't a, it wasn't an explosion as in an ignition it was pressure so I can only think that there's a valve inside those batteries I can only think that valve had jammed shut and over time that battery had built up pressure eventually just let go i was standing on the swims when it happened so yeah just a word of caution guys i am going to do some work some more uh work on battery safety and just because i do what i do doesn't mean you can do what you do you know we all have a responsibility to ourselves if if you're not competent don't touch it have we got that clear i think we probably have oh i need a little bit more cable Nobody likes cables like banjo strings. Banjo string, guitar strings maybe. We used to call banjo strings when we was a British dude. Uh, yeah, that's plenty of slack on there. So that, that's those cables run to the solar panels. Uh, I'm just gonna put the flexible, flexible in just so it, it sort of hides them out of the way. Quite like that. Okay, these are the roof glands I use. Um, again, bonded down. You can if you want to, um, I tend not to, but you can if you want to drill small holes in here and put some, uh, so drill and tap and put some like M4s or something in there if you if you really wanted to, but I, I just bond them down. That's what they're designed for, to be bonded. Okay, so there's a, a grommet in there, in that hole. Uh, that'll all be sealed up when, when I finish messing around. there is just split the cables so I've not got crossover after crossover so these are the M MC4 connectors I tend, I, you, you don't have to buy them in a pair. I tend to. Uh, so you've got male and female with the crimson side. Uh, proper uh, crimp tool for the MC4s. Uh, and you can tell a boater's tools, well, an electrician's tools, I'm get, they're getting wet all the time. So back in the day when somebody said about rusty tools, it was a bit of a derog derogatory comment 
that they were never used. Mine are used, but they do get wet from time to time. So that's why they're wet the way they are. But I've had these a long time. I'd strip them cables back, get these crimped on and get them plugged in. A double insulated this cable is. Always making sure we leave all the cores where they should be attached. Right, so. Plastic in my pocket. So um, this is the one I want to plug into. This is a negative off the first solar panel. Um, this is quite weird, really. I'm not getting into the birds and bees. This looks female, yes, but it's actually a male pin that's inside. So it's the female crimp with the, weirdly, the male plug, okay? So if you crimp the wrong ones on, they ain't gonna fit. So the way they go is, that goes on there. Sometimes I need just a little squeeze to get them into the into the former. Push that all the way in. That's it, and then just crimp down. So you see the the join that 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 the compression that gives. If you was to just squash that with a screwdriver or something, you ain't gonna get the same effect. So then with the plug there, that just pushes in with a click and tighten up the, the weather seal at the end. Okay, so that's there. I'm not gonna plug that in yet. I'm gonna crimp the other one on. And the reason I'm not gonna plug it in is because I'll have 100 volts on the other end and I've got to strip that and connect that in yet. So. Safety first. I work on live stuff all the time. Doesn't mean you should. Right, let's go into the other one. Quite a short season really, although I'm generally busy all the time. Um, I don't like working in the cold and the rain and the, the whole bonus. So you can see that goes in there just the same way, making sure all the strands are in there. Okay, so again, you can see the crimp there. And this plugs in the same way, in with a thud. And then this will go to this positive, which is the end panel. Okay. Again, I'm not going to click them in yet because I've got a wire in the other side. Okay, difficult to film that, but uh, there's the uh, isolator for the incoming solar voltage, uh, fuses further up, and uh, the MPPTs there as well. So I'm just going to go and connect them up, and we can see what we've got. Uh, a little bit of trunk in there. Well, I've come through the roof. I've used that original gland with a, a, an insert in it to stop any chafing. So just to try and neaten it up a little bit. That's the negative connected and now the positive. Cables in out the way. Right, let's see what we're getting. I've just I've uh, turned the shore power off, so there's only the solar on now. I can see that uh, we are charging 13 amps. Uh, so I'll wait for him to come back and just check the battery settings and stuff. But that's but, that's uh, that pretty much done. I've got to put a bit of flexible conduit on those cables. Um, and of course, if it does stop raining. Looks pretty bright now. I can bond the panels down. Happy days. Nearly there.
Right, so once I've um, measured up and made sure it's all square, I use this, uh, this is fog tape. Uh, it's a low tack one, so this paint's pretty new, so I've got to be really careful with it. Uh, and that allows me to lift up the panels, squirt some CT1, structural adhesive, um, sit that down, rub my finger around, uh, and then none of the ad adhesive gets squashed out all over the, the paintwork. I've been doing it this way for a few years now. It seems to work okay for me. Other ways are available. But yeah, I'll just go around and get all these done. Then I can uh, squirt some stuff under, get them glued down. It's actually stopped raining. Wow. All right, let's get these bonded down while the sun's out. Um, that's the stuff I use. Yes, you can use Sikaflex and other things. This is just what I use. And I've had lots of success with it. And if you look it up, I think it's quality stuff, so that's why I use it. So you can see there where I've put masking tape around. That that's two functions really. It keeps the adhesive off the off the paint. See, I just uh, just set them down a bit, and that's why I leave these screws loose. Just settling them down. Uh, just a quick tip battery's low don't use that cheap white masking tape um, it leaves a residue behind and if it gets wet it leaves all the adhesive behind as someone found out the other day i don't use that anymore i use this low contact fog tape much better um comes off cleaner it's a bit more expensive but uh yeah you pay for what you get All bonded down now. Just that cable entry to do. 50 A's, got his cap on backwards. You won't believe it, would you? Cue the haters. <laughs> right, I just need to bond this down now. Let's put you there. Uh, where's the sticky stuff? So again, same thing. I'm gonna put a bit around the cable entry. Doesn't really need any there. Because the seat the seal is actually the outside. So So 
I'm just hoping I've got enough in this last tube of CTU1. You wouldn't believe it, would you? <laughs> I don't believe it. Always quite awkward where those uh, cable entries sit. Right, that should that should hold it. We'll let that go, see what it comes out like. Um, worst case, we'll, we'll strip that off when he paints the roof and we'll, uh, we'll rebond it down with all the fresh paint. So that's, that's me just about done really. I just need to check the configuration of the um, MPPT controller. Uh, which we can do on the smart on the on the smartphone on on a phone. They're all pretty much smart now. Um, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll ping you a screenshot of that here somewhere, which shows you the the yield. It's it's obviously the batteries are charged now, so you're not going to see full full yield. You know, full current because the battery is already full. They've been on charge all day. So, but yeah, that's about it. Put the conduit in when the customer's painted his roof. Not too bad a job really, it's come out okay. All working fine, I've had my current meat on as you've seen. But when he comes back from wherever he is, I'll, uh, I'll just punch into that um, MPPT controller and uh, just check everything's funky dory. So there you go, one solar install, job done. Must be time for a cider or a beer, one of the two. Anyway, I hope you found that um, useful. Again, don't attempt anything if you're not competent to do so. So uh, make sure everything's dead, not live. Uh, watch out for those DC voltages that everybody think is all friendly and happy days. They're not. Um, and yeah, be careful. Make sure you know what you're doing. Or you think you know what you're doing, as we all do. <laughs> right, see you next time, guys. I hope you found that useful. Uh, there's typical solar install. I've got another four to do in the next couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, hope you found that useful. See you next time, guys. And um, yeah, press that subscribe button. Thank you. Bye.